Hi everyone. The USS Constitution boasts a storied history, rich with remarkable incidents that epitomize its spirit. In this video, I'd like to delve into a few, particularly intriguing from my perspective. One such episode showcasing the indomitable spirit and pride of this famed vessel unfolded near the Rock of Gibraltar. On the night of 6th of September 1803, USS Constitution encountered an unfamiliar ship in the darkness. The crew swiftly prepared for action stations as they drew alongside the unknown vessel. Captain Preble hailed the ship, expecting a customary response. However, instead of a friendly exchange, he was met with evasion. Preble, identifying his ship as the United States Frigate Constitution, received an ambiguous reply in return. His patience waning, Preble issued a final warning, stating his intent to fire a shot if a proper response wasn't given. The mysterious ship retorted with a threatening promise of a broadside in return. Preble persisted, demanding the unknown vessel to reveal its identity. The response claimed to be the British ship, his Britannic Majesty's ship Donegal, 84 guns, under Sir Richard Strachan, an English Commodore. He demanded USS Constitution to send its boat on board. Unyielding in his resolve, Preble, an American Commodore aboard the United States ship Constitution, adamantly refused, declaring, I will be damned before I send my boat on board any vessel. His command to his gun crews was clear, blow your matches, boys. Before the situation escalated further, a boat arrived from the mysterious vessel. A British lieutenant conveyed his captain's apologies. It turned out that the ship was not Donegal but HMS Maidstone, a 32-gun frigate. This incident solidified the bond between Preble and his officers, known as Preble's Boys. It showcased Preble's unwavering determination to defy a presumed ship of the line, establishing a legacy of resilience and loyalty aboard USS Constitution. The Battle of Tripoli Harbor stands as a testament to Captain Preble's creativity and strategic prowess within the annals of USS Constitution's history. The incident began with the unfortunate grounding of the USS Philadelphia, commanded by William Bainbridge, during pursuit of a Tripoline vessel. The crew was captured, and the Tripolines managed to refloat and bring the Philadelphia into their harbor. Determined to deprive the enemy of their prize, Preble devised a daring plan. Utilizing the captured ship Mastigo, renamed Intrepid, he aimed to destroy the Philadelphia. Under the command of Stephen Decatur, the Intrepid entered Tripoli Harbor on February 16, 1804, disguised as a merchant ship. Decatur's swift actions led to overpowering the Tripoline crew and setting the Philadelphia ablaze. Following this, Preble withdrew the squadron to Syracuse, Sicily, preparing for a summer assault on Tripoli. Acquiring smaller gunboats capable of navigating closer to Tripoli's shores than the Constitution, Preble's fleet, including the Constitution, Argus, Enterprise, Scourge, Siren, six gunboats, and two bomb catches. Immediately commencing operations, they faced off against 22 Tripoline gunboats in the harbor. Through a series of attacks over the ensuing month, Constitution and its squadron significantly damaged or destroyed the Tripoline gunboats, capturing their crews. Constitution played a pivotal role in providing artillery support, bombarding Tripoli's shore batteries. Despite their losses, the Tripoline leader, Karaman Lee, remained resolute in demanding ransom and tribute. In a final daring attempt for the season, Preble outfitted the Intrepid as a floating volcano with 100 short tons of gunpowder. Under Richard Soma's command, the Intrepid sailed into Tripoli Harbor, aiming to explode amidst the Corsair fleet near the city walls. 
Tragically, the Intrepid exploded prematurely, resulting in the loss of Summers and his entire crew of 13 volunteers. With the arrival of Constellation and President under Samuel Barron's command, Preble, being senior in rank, reluctantly relinquished command of the squadron to Barron. Consequently, Constitution received orders to proceed to Malta. The USS Constitution vs HMS Gary Air marked a significant battle between American and British naval forces, situated around 400 miles southeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia, on August 19, 1812. The encounter began with the sighting of a frigate, later identified as HMS Guerriere, conspicuously displaying the words not the little belt on her foretop sail. As the two vessels met, Guerriere's captain James Richard Dakers, confident of victory, engaged the US ship. The initial cannon fire from Guerriere upon entering range of Constitution proved ineffective. Captain Hull skillfully maneuvered the Constitution within 25 yards of Guerriere, delivering a devastating broadside of grape and round shot that demolished Guerriere's mizzenmast. With her maneuverability compromised, Guerriere collided with Constitution, becoming entangled in her rigging. Despite Hull's cabin catching fire from enemy shots, swift action extinguished the flames. Both captains attempted boarding actions, but rough seas prevented either party from successfully boarding the opposing ship. In a dramatic turn, the ships rotated counterclockwise under the continuous broadsides from Constitution. Upon separation, the extraction of Guerriere's bowsprit sent shockwaves through her rigging, resulting in the collapse of her foremast and subsequently, the mainmast. Guerriere lay dismasted and incapacitated, with nearly a third of her crew wounded or killed, while Constitution remained relatively unscathed. The British surrendered. Hull's strategic prowess and Constitution's superior firepower took the British by surprise. Adding to their astonishment, many British shots ricocheted harmlessly off Constitution's hull. A jubilant American sailor reportedly exclaimed, Huzzah! Her sides are made of iron. Thus, the USS Constitution earned the enduring nickname Old Ironsides due to her seemingly impervious hull and resounding victory in this pivotal engagement. On December 29, 1812, the USS Constitution encountered HMS Java under Captain Henry Lambert. Bainbridge initiated communication, but Java responded with a devastating broadside that inflicted severe damage to Constitution's rigging. Despite this initial setback, Constitution rallied and retaliated with a series of powerful broadsides directed at Java. During the exchange, a shot from Java obliterated Constitution's helm, leaving Bainbridge to steer manually using the tiller for the remainder of the battle. Remarkably, despite sustaining injuries, Bainbridge continued to command. As the battle progressed, Java's bowsprit became entangled in Constitution's rigging, reminiscent of the earlier engagement with Guerriere, allowing Bainbridge to continue delivering punishing broadsides. The destruction wrought by Constitution was significant, causing Java's foremast to collapse sending debris crashing through multiple decks. After drawing off briefly for urgent repairs, Bainbridge returned an hour later to find Java in a dire state, a shattered vessel with a badly wounded crew. Recognizing the futility of claiming Java as a prize due to its extensive damage, Bainbridge ordered her to be burned, salvaging Java's helm, which was later installed on Constitution. Having effectively disabled Java, Constitution returned to São Salvador on January 1, 1813, to disembark the prisoners taken from Java. 
The capture of Java marked the third British warship in three months to fall to the United States, a victory that reverberated through naval circles. Consequently, the British Admiralty issued orders prohibiting their frigates from engaging American frigates in one-on-one -on -one combat. Only British ships of the line or squadrons were authorized to engage at close range. Thanks for watching.